After pretending to have learned their lesson with the naming scheme of the RTX 4080 16GB and 12GB versions, leading to an unlaunching of the poorly named RTX 4080 12GB, because they didn't just differ in memory capacity, they also differed in performance significantly. As I've reported in the past, NVIDIA launched an RTX 3060 with 8 gigabyte memory instead of the 12 gigabytes of memory that has always been on the RTX 3060 up to this point. And NVIDIA has, has you know, claimed that this, you know, increases options, all of that. Well, great, because eight gigabytes of memory capacity is fine at 1080p in most situations, but this also means that you have to cut down the memory bus, leading to decreased performance, as I said when I originally reported on this. Well, we now have hardware unboxed, actually getting their hands on the eight gigabyte version and testing it. And it's exactly what I feared, which is a significant performance reduction compared to the normal RTX 3060 12 gigabyte. And consumers who are not aware that they're getting a performance difference, not just a memory capacity difference, are in for a uh, unfortunate surprise or just a bad purchasing decision. This videocards.com article summarizes some of the 12 game averages, but I fully recommend that you go watch the full video um, and, and look into this and support Hardware Unboxed in their excellent testing, because this is uh, great information to be out there and we should spread the word. In their testing at 1080p, the 3060 12 gigabyte, you know, is normally right there neck and neck with the 6600 XT and is beating the 6600 non-XT, where we're seeing the 3060 8 gigabyte falling significantly short. It is faster than an RTX 3050, but it's also, you know, a little bit slower than an Intel Arc A750, and it's slower than an RX 6600 non-XT. This is a significant performance difference and it's also having a significant performance difference at, uh, at 1440p as well. I highly recommend you watch the full video, but my overall thoughts on this, as I said when I first saw this news and suspected the large performance gap that would occur, is that NVIDIA should have called this the RTX 3050 Ti because there is no 3050 Ti on desktop. I believe there is on laptops, but right now there is a massive performance gap between an RTX 3050 and an RTX 3060. This 3068 gigabyte is, well, filling that gap, but why did we not call it the 3050 Ti so people are more aware of the type of performance that they should expect? So I'm not happy to see this naming scheme now still, it would be good to see a card like this if it was being offered significantly cheaper than the 3060 12 gigabyte model. As of now, that doesn't appear to be the case. Um, although, you know, this is a rather new product, so we'll see where things settle. If consumers actually do catch on that this is significantly less performant, then hopefully the market will adjust its prices down. I just wish that it didn't have such a misleading name. Now, the argument for this name making sense is that it does basically have the same GPU uh, specs other than the memory, which then causes the memory bus to be cut down. But that does have a significant Im um, impact to the performance. So I'm not happy to see this. Now let's jump into some news I am happier to see which is I think a lot of us um, want to see scalpers punished for their sins. <laughs> uh, throughout the GPU apocalypse, you know, scalper bots bought up GPUs instantly, sold them well above their MSRPs, and they were able to do that because, well, crypto miners were willing to pay basically any price that could still give them a return on their investment through mining. Now that's fallen out the wayside. Scalpers still had some success with the RTX 4090s who were like, oh no, is this happening again? Well, a lot of them still bought up the RTX 4080, but now we're seeing reports of at least some scalpers trying to just liquidate their 4080 stockpile um, just without taking a loss, let alone a profit. So uh, we're seeing um, reported on Reddit, and I'm seeing it, uh, you know, uh, captured here on videocards.com. All the links to all my sources are always in the description. That the RTX 4080, various GPUs, brand new sealed, all being returned, offering MSRP within the next five days. So basically this scalper is going to return his GPUs if he can't um, just unload them at MSRP within the next five days. Now he says MSRP, but then charges 1300. The MSRP was 1200, although some cards did cost more than um, more than the $1,200 MSRP. So this is pretty interesting. Now, um, 
Also note that certain retailers aren't allowing refunds, they're only allowing replacements. That's at places like Newegg, so if scalpers did buy at somewhere like Newegg, they actually can't return the GPUs for a refund. Um, but we don't know where they went ahead and, and did purchase these. But I think we're all happy to see that people are kind of saying no to overpriced GPUs, at least some people voting with their wallets, and that, um, you know, some scalpers are finally, you know, if, if they start to lose money on this stuff enough, please just leave this, this, <laughs> this industry. I would, I would love to see that. But if they can just return them, then it's really kind of a, uh, not too big of a risk if they end up just getting their money back on a return. But anyway, now, if those do all end up getting returned, what does that do to the overall supply situation on GPUs? So let's talk about this. So uh, I found a WCCF Tech article quoting NVIDIA themselves talking about GPU supply, going into the overall 30 series as well as the 4090 and even mentioning the 4080. Uh, the overall headline here is that 4090s sold out within two weeks and there were a lot of them and they were expensive. So that's showing a healthy demand in the gaming segment, but that channel inventory will be stabilizing and normalizing by the first half of 2023. Now, if you dig further into this for some of the actual quotes, uh, this is from uh, Colette Cress, NVIDIA's chief financial officer, and she's saying, uh, so we've been under shipping. So this is what a lot of people have been talking about because there was that famous uh, phone uh, investor phone call from Jensen um, where he basically explained their plan to keep RTX 30 series pricing from crashing as crypto demand decreased and used cards entered the market. The plan was basically to under ship, and this is further confirmation that that's what they've been doing. So we've been under shipping. We've been under shipping gaming at this time so that we can correct inventory that is out in the channel. As we discussed, we plan hopefully by the end of quarter four, as we approach the end of quarter four, that we will be in a solid position to, I guess, do that. Uh, that means as we move forward, we will start to get back up. We'll get to some point of an equilibrium between sell through and sell in, and then we will likely get to where we'll be selling in to build the channel for our ADA launch and all of the additional ADA products that we'll see coming to market. So basically what they're saying is they knew there were going to be uh, too many GPUs, you know, with the used market, the crypto demand crashing, there was an overproduction. Uh, so there was already too many 30 series cards in the chain. So they stopped shipping them so that as, as they sell, you know, the supply and demand balances out uh, to, ke to keep prices up. Uh, they're all saying ADA is just in the early days right now of shipping. We've shipped one of our very high-end cards, um, the 4090, and our 4080 is just now starting to sell as well. So that's just kind of an update on what they're selling. Um, they're saying their ADA launched the 4090 when it came out. Yes, it was only the very first card and the high-end card. It sold out in two weeks. We're very pleased to see something that was a nod for us that we knew that gaming, no matter what time of year, no matter what in the situation, is still a very important entertainment industry. I'm guessing this is a transcript of a phone call, given the kind of uh, grammatical structure that we're seeing here and all of that. Um, anyway, let's move on, but basically it's confirmation that they'd been under shipping to keep supplies and demand kind of balanced out to keep the prices from crashing out, uh, but that they're starting to see those selling through and then uh, sh they're kind of refreshing like we saw with the 3080, sorry, 3068 gigabyte version that they are kind of refreshing some of their uh, 30 series. Now, in regards to what GPUs are actually selling, the new Steam hardware survey is out and the GTX 1060 has finally been dethroned and the GTX 1650, which if I'm remembering correctly, is actually an even weaker GPU, is now uh, the top of the list. Now, the top of the list, I believe the first, well, this is showing at least 10, but when I took a look, I think at least the first 15 are still all NVIDIA GPUs. So Intel and AMD have certainly not claimed a large portion of the overall GPU market here with any particular models. Uh, the big difference here is just seeing the 1650 uh, making a, a, a pretty healthy uh, jump here, whereas the uh, 1060 lost 1.85%, uh, moving it down to second place. Now, one thing I will throw out here is that the 1650 and 1060 both shipped with different VRAM amounts. Again, speaking of different VRAM amounts and performance, um, both of those have that, but they're lumped into the same category in the Steam 
Steam hardware survey. And that might be kind of inflating their popularity if you split those out as separate, um, separate listings based on the memory capacity, then maybe these wouldn't actually be the top performers. Uh, the RTX 2060 is the number one RTX card, GTX taking the two top spots. And then the 3060 laptop is the first 30 series card on the list. The 1050 Ti is still more popular than the normal 3060 uh, desktop version. And uh, we'll see if that gets inflated with eight gigabyte versions thrown in there as well. Anyway, kind of an interesting list. It's definitely showing that the 50 and 60 series are the, by far the most popular. The 3070 is coming in after the 1660 Ti, and that's the only 70 class GPU in the top 10. Um, so I like, we really need to see Nvidia launching and, and AMD launching the lower tier cards before we, uh, uh, you know, I think most people are, are gonna jump in. Now this could be bad news. So there's been a lot of tariffs on products coming from China, you know, electronics products, all of that, but According to this Tom's Hardware article, GPU, the GPUs have had a tariff exemption, which is set to expire on December 31st, and there doesn't seem to be any sign of that changing. Well, if that tariff expires, that could mean higher GPU prices in the United States, but not only in the United States, because that would probably affect that whole shipping system into North America. So I would guess that at least Mexico and Canada would also be affected. And then a lot of times worldwide pricing is kind of affected by US MSRPs. So if that was the case, then this could also mean higher prices just everywhere. Although, like we saw with, with the 4080, you know, g consumers are only going to accept so much of a bad deal. So I don't know, we'll see what happens, but this could drive up costs for manufacturers, which then is um, likely going to get passed on to the consumer. I mean, <laughs> that's just probably what's gonna happen. Anyway, um, looking into the used market, I found a recent article here from November 30th from WCCF Tech talking about how uh, NV NVIDIA RTX 30 Ampere GPU supply evaporates from the market as secondhand prices increase by up to 200%. Now that doesn't mean every model is increasing by 200%. This is, you know, headlines make it sound dramatic. But the point is, as we saw in that NVIDIA um, uh, transcript we just looked at, by reducing the sell through, then as the uh, as the you know crypto cards, the used ones enter the market, if we're not flooding with more new inventory, then people might buy up the used inventory that's available. And then as you know, s supply decreases on that used side, then the prices can come back up even on the used ones, which then helps keep the the new ones at a higher price. Now, in this article, they admit that they don't actually know why this is happening, but their speculation, um, I think gets into wondering whether or not that scalpers or investors in these cards are buying up the cheapest uh, GPUs on the used market in order to keep selling prices higher and just keeping them in a warehouse and like trickling out the supply. Now, to be clear, that is speculation by this article's author, but I mean, you know, could be. <laughs> anyway, speaking of prices going up, all of that, AMD has been talking about, okay, so Jensen was talking about how Moore's Law is dead, um, uh, com computer components like GPUs getting less expensive is a thing of the past. Well, AMD has commented on that, although they're saying, well, Moore's Law isn't dead, but it is getting more expensive, and then goes into how AMD in their designs for their CPUs and GPUs has tried to account for that to keep their prices from uh, skyrocketing as much as maybe their competition would. Now, uh, Moore's Law, I'm sure most of you know what that is, but it's basically talking about a cadence for density of transistors doubling. Originally it was every year, but then revised to every two years. But then this also implied that at the same price, so you could get twice as many transistors on a chip every two years at basically the same price. Um, but it's the pricing aspect of that 
um, that is really the problem. Not only is the doubling of transistor density slowing down, um, but the pricing is going up. Now, this is the quote from Papermaster at AMD saying, and you've all heard many times Moore's Law is slowing down, Moore's Law is dead. Um, but he's saying it's not that there's not going to be exciting new transistor technologies. Actually, I can see exciting new transistor technology for the next as far as you can really plot these things out. It's about six to eight years that we can plot it out, you know. And it's very, very clear to me that the advances we're going to make uh, to keep improving the transistor technology, but they're more expensive. So that's the big deal. And so that's where... Um, Papermaster is talking about AMD having seen this coming, and that's why they moved to chiplets, because then you can put only the most relevant parts of the uh, CPU or GPU on the latest and most expensive node, and then you can move other things like the I.O. to a less expensive node, because those things don't gain as much from newing to, moving to the, um, the newer transistor node, right? So... That's that's one of the ideas. They're also talking about um, equipping CPUs and GPUs with specialized accelerators becoming more important. So special little accelerators on the chip rather than being just part of the larger chip because those specialized accelerators, so GPU acceleration, specialized function units, and adaptive compute, like we acquired with when we bought Xilinx, I think that's how you pronounce that, uh, <laughs> uh, you're going to see tremendous in innovation on how those come together, and it will really keep us on pace. So basically they're saying that you have to adjust for the fact that just making the same size GPU die on the newer, newer, uh, newer transistor, you know, on the newer node, is going to be more expensive at the same area. So you have to look for things like chiplets and whatnot and, and specialized function units to drive down the cost to still allow us to push forward without such crazy um, you know, price hikes. We'll see how it goes, but that's AMD's take on the situation. Now, speaking of AMD and pricing, the AMD's Ryzen 7000 CPUs got lower prices over Black Friday, and it was announced to be a special pricing and not a new normal. However, it's looking like now that we're past, uh, you know, the Black Friday week and, and Cyber Monday, that this is now staying at those lower prices as part of holiday deals. And honestly, if this is what it takes to move units, these should probably just be the new prices, unless we see motherboards for AM5 take a big decline in pricing. Or, you know, honestly, it would be nice to see both, these, pr these lower prices on the CPUs. Because honestly, I think these prices on the CPUs themselves is fine. These are pretty good. If you look at them compared to their competition at Intel, CPU to CPU, but then when you look at motherboard pricing, um, that's where things, I think, get a little bit, um, you know, worse here. Also, look at the new packaging design. Looks 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 nice. <laughs> anyway, so hopefully we see those prices continue to stay at those lower points. Now, speaking of lower prices and motherboard pricing, a Gigabyte B760 RS Elite motherboard with DDR4 memory uh, has been pictured. Now, the B760s would be, you know, the lower end boards which should be coming in at lower prices, especially the ones with DDR4 memory should be at lower prices, and then buying the DDR4 memory would be also lowering the price of your build. So we're seeing um, some screenshots of, uh, of, so well, photos, not screenshots, <laughs> of this motherboard, but we still don't have an exact release date on when we will see it uh, coming out, and this is being reported by video cards, uh, but their source was originally from My Drivers, which I think is a Chinese outlet. Uh, it's expected that both products will accompany Intel's launch of the 13th Gen Core mobile platform at CES of 2023. Um, now, speaking of RAM, but not DDR4, but what if instead of going the save money on DDR4 route, you wanted to go with super fast DDR5? We're seeing G-Skill with some DDR5 8000 hitting the market with CL38 timings. So really fast RAM on the way. It'll be interesting to see just how far DDR5 RAM speeds can get pushed and what impact that has on gaming and which CPUs and motherboards can even support that, all of that. Now, looking at new AMD graphics cards, the RX 7900 Nitro series from Sapphire has been teased in a very short little uh, tweet video. But if you dig into the details of that video, 
Um, it's looking like the vapor chamber is back and you can see a three eight pin power connector. So remember AMD's reference models that they showed off in their announcement um, had two eight pin connectors. It's looking like confirmation that the 7900 Nitro series from Sapphire will have three eight pin connectors. Now, how about power connectors? <laughs> What about the 12 VH power uh, lawsuit happening over the melting power connectors on NVIDIA GPUs? Well, the consortium who, um, f who gives the spec for these power connectors, PCI SIG, ha uh, tells GPU makers to improve testing in response to NVIDIA's, uh, the lawsuit regarding this. Um, now, I think what this article looks at like to me is PCI SIG trying to distance themselves from the, um, where's the actual quote? I want the actual quote. Uh, here we go, here's the actual quote. So let's read the quote and then I'll give you my thoughts. So PCI SIG, so this is directly from PCI SIG who gives the, um, the specifications for this uh, connector. Wishes to impress upon all members that manufacture, market, or sell uh, PCI SIG technologies, including the 12VH power connectors. Uh, of the need to take all appropriate and prudent measures to ensure end user safety, including testing for the reported problem cases involving consumers as alleged in the above referenced lawsuit. Members are reminded that PCI SIG specifications provide necessary technical information for interop interoperability and do not attempt to address proper design manufacturing methods, material safety testing, safety tolerances, or workmanship. When implementing a PCI SIG specification, members are responsible for the design, manufacturing, and testing, including safety testing of their products. So this sounds like the uh, group, you know, <laughs> PCI SIG, who, uh, you know, gives the specification is trying to pass on the blame for any of these melting. Now, according to NVIDIA, as well as um, Gamers Nexus's independent testing and analysis, the issue really just seems to be that when they're not plugged fully in, you can build up enough resistance and heat that it melts. When they're fully plugged in, that shouldn't be happening. However, if, you, if the design of the cable makes it easy to not plug it in all the way, this is both a combination of user error and cable design. You have to push these things in kind of hard, like harder than you would expect. In other words, it's, it's easier to make this mistake than it was with the eight pin power connectors. And you're running a lot more power through a single connector. So I, yes, it's user error, but it's user error that's more likely given the design. Anyway, uh, BOE, the display manufacturer, is unveiling the world's first 600 hertz gaming laptop display. Um, they have a video, this is like a still screenshot from a video that's compressed, so this doesn't look great, and this is being reported at videocards.com, but there's the screenshot of it. Now, in back in January, BOE already announced a 27-inch 500 hertz gaming panel, which we haven't really seen uh, out in the wild yet, but we're now seeing announcement of the 600 hertz panel for laptops, which is pretty crazy. Uh, the highest refresh rate panel we've seen in a laptop was on a Dell Alienware X17R2, which had a 1080p 480 hertz panel. So we'll see when or if we end up seeing this out in the market, but for competitive gamers out there, 600 hertz. Uh, that's pretty, very evenly divisible number. So that actually, I think 600 hertz is a very interesting refresh rate number. Anyway, video's getting long, so I'm not gonna dwell on that. So we're seeing um, a new AirJet chip promising to overhaul laptop cooling. Basically a way to, um, like, how can, I can't even explain it. Use like vibrating membranes to funnel air out without spinning fans which is a really interesting cooling idea. We'll see if it makes it to market. Apparently this is supposed to be demonstrated at CES. Um, the, uh, speaking of small form factors, the Intel NUC 13 Pro prototype is showing an updated design for their four inch by four inch. Although this is not the fully finished version, this uh, is apparently a prototype ch chassis with a NUC 12 board inside of it in this screenshot. Uh, we're seeing new game ready drivers from NVIDIA. Um, getting ready for Marvel's Midnight Suns, as well as uh, Need for Speed Unbound. We're also seeing some more, um, you know, optimal settings and fixed issues, but this video is getting long, so moving on. AMD is also getting 
a driver update, and this one for Witcher 3 Wild Hunt next-gen update support, as well as Callisto protocol support. Now, speaking of the Callisto protocol, um, oh, sorry, also the need for speed unbound here as well. Anyway, speaking of Callisto protocol, the uh, system requirements for the ultra settings have been listed as an RTX 3080 or 6900 XT, although they did not specify what resolution and settings, uh, well, what resolution and frame rate that was targeting. Now, the lower end system requirements are not nearly as demanding, just listing a 1060 or RX 580 uh, for minimum and a recommendation of a 1070 or 5700. Although again, no actual resolution and uh, performance numbers listed for that. Now, speaking of performance on PC, this is looking to be another Unreal Engine stuttering mess that is just not optimized with the shader compilations. Many reviews are reporting this. This WCCF Tech article even runs the in-game benchmark once and then runs it again to demonstrate that the first time through, it runs terribly and runs much better the second time through. They're also reporting that the ray tracing demand um, uh, you can save 61.4% uh, performance by turning off ray tracing, and in their opinion, the ray traced effects don't even look much better compared to the rasterized ones, so they recommend turning them off. And the game is getting kind of middling reviews on Metacritic, and that's already causing the publisher's stock to go down. Anyway, I was looking forward to the game, and I still hope it's good, but <laughs> I haven't had a chance to try it myself yet. Anyway, NVIDIA is reporting DLSS 3 is now available in 14 games and coming to December's biggest releases. I was going to delve into this article in more detail, uh, talking about which games were getting it and all of that, but I think I'm going to have to just wrap up this video, guys. We're pushing a half hour already. So yeah, kind of crazy stuff. However, one thing in that um, that is I do want to mention is that they Nvidia is listing ray traced reflections as part of the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt next gen update. Whereas in the announcement trailer, it talked about ray traced global illumination and shadows, but did not mention ray traced reflections. However, this Nvidia post does specifically state ray traced reflections are available in this um, in this game. Ray traced reflections right there, it's listed. So we'll see if that's a mistake or if we really do get the updated ray traced reflections. Now, Apple AR headset gets a new operating system name uh, called XROS. Originally, we'd been reported this would be called Reality OS, but it is being renamed to XROS according to the latest rumors. We're seeing AMD's Ryzen 7730U Barcelona refresh CPU spotted. I don't want to dwell on this though because it's mostly just a refresh of an older unit and still has Vega GPU in it. So anyway, the Aeneo 2, which is you know your Steam Deck's uh, competitor type device, but coming in at more like a $1,000-ish price point, uh, is coming in with a Ryzen 7 6800U uh, which should have, I believe, yes, uh, a, a Radeon 680M embedded graphics, which should be fairly powerful. Although this does come in, like I said, at a higher price tag to, compared to the Steam Deck, but keep your eye out on that if you're interested in the form factor. We're also seeing Nightingale partnering with Intel uh, to feature Intel's XESS support and um, ARC optimizations in their upcoming game. So um, interesting stuff there. I was going to go into them talking about it a bit, but this video needs to end. I hope all of you have an excellent day.